Greg Idrafields has had an interesting week. After calling his fans, quote, a bunch of fucks and claiming that he, quote, gets paid to treat them like it, he would go on to be eliminated from the WCS during the round of 32, leaving one game versus Polt earlier than most pros would dare. The following day, Team Evil Geniuses, a team that has supported Idra since joining them on September 7th, 2010, released him from the team. Greg, first off, thanks for coming and uh, being on the show. Uh, I, I want to just really start off simply with, how are you doing? Uh, quite well, actually. I mean, obviously, I've been with EG for a long time. They were kind of like a family to me. They were a support system for a long time. And it's just that's something I've gotten used to because I've been with them for a long time. But on the other hand, you know, this is a good opportunity for me. I think it's a, um, I, like, I think opportunity is the right word for it. I, I feel like I can do a lot with this, and it's going to be a way for me to really kind of revitalize my career within esports because I was obviously not happy with what I was doing before. I felt it was pretty stagnant and whatnot. So. You know, it's a change, but it's something that can be very good as long as I use it well. Well, let, let's talk about the events leading up to the announcement of your removal from EG. Starting back with something that happened in, uh, I believe, late March. Uh, Jeff and Control Robinson, your, your former teammate and I believe close friend, was on uh, his personal stream yesterday and was talking about the incident that occurred with uh, Kapach, the Argentinian Protoss player, uh, where you told him, quote, I genuinely hope something bad happens to you, like you get cancer or something. Can you kind of flesh out this incident and, and talk about what happened as a result? I think we were playing four or five ladder games. It was streamed, so people saw, but I'm not, I don't remember exactly what happened. We were playing four or five games, and he just kept doing the same dumb all-ins, or, well, different dumb all-ins, but he is well-known as just like a very cheesy player. He's willing to take any risks. and just the kind of player that's very, very frustrating for anyone to play against. And I was kind of sick of it. I'd been losing to it. I was kind of sick of it. So I just I said that. And like, Obviously, that's not something you say to anyone. That's a pretty terrible thing to say. But I tend to go with that when I get really annoyed. I try and go way, way overboard so that no one will actually like leave. I actually mean it. Like, I don't want anyone to be sodomized with a tire iron. I don't actually want him to get cancer. But um, I probably need to rethink that approach because it doesn't seem to be working. People tend to take it seriously anyway. So yeah, I was just pissed off at him. I wanted to say something mean. It's kind of, kind of what I do. Well, what was the what was EG's management management response to that? Uh, Jeff mentioned that uh, they took you out to dinner. Can you kind of talk about what happened? If you were fined at all or anything like that? Uh, there was no fine on that one. Um, at the time, there was nothing at all. Uh, it was on May 25th and down the road a little bit, uh, about five or six days ago, me and Cody and Alex, Cody was the EG's, or is EG's GM and Alex obviously the CEO, um, we just all went out to dinner, but the specific purpose wasn't necessarily that comment. It was just the conversation took the course of, we know you're not happy, things obviously aren't working out well, it's not productive for you or for the team, what can we do with this? And also, you need to stop being a massive douchebag on stream, referencing that, that comment in particular. Um, but there was no fine, there was no, this is the last warning, or anything like that. It was just, this, this behavior doesn't work. The same way it had been every other time, like, back when I said David and Kim should be raped with a tire iron. Uh, obviously, I was told that can't happen again either, and for the most part, it didn't. Like I said, just sometimes I get really pissed off, and I say dumb shit, and that kind of happens. But um, that's actually kind of the only thing that annoys me about this whole thing. It's like I've actually never been fined more than $500 or anything. I said there was no escalation of penalties. This didn't really have the feel of uh, this is your last chance kind of thing to me. That's kind of how I feel it's been presented. Which that's, that's really my only beef with the whole thing. Uh, a lot of your fans were pretty quick to reference what happened with Stefano and the fact that he did have some pretty major um, fines, whether I think it was actually not playing in any other tournaments and whatnot, and then he ended up going to Korea. Um, comparing your event to what happened with Stefano, uh, is there any comparison there? Do you kind of think, why did that happen to him and why did this happen to me at all? Uh, we're different people with different values and different contracts. And just everything is very different. And comparing those kind of things is an easy way to reach conclusions that you can't really put too much weight in. Obviously, he got suspended. He did something, um, well, said something that some people would argue is worse, some people would argue is better. Uh, it's all down to perception. Uh, he got punished in a certain way, but he didn't have the same kind of history. Like He has a history as a party boy of not really like cooperating with management or being the easiest to work with, but that's different than having a history of kind of being a jackass and not being particularly polite to people. So mine was just like the continuation of a pattern that they had gotten tired of, whereas his was more of a standalone incident, so I can understand the difference in, the difference in punishment. 
that's not some. I'm not looking to compare it to anyone else because there isn't really a comparable circumstance, in my opinion. Well, let's talk about the next incident that happened, which really was not a, as big of a deal until the WCS match, and then, of course, when you were finally removed, at least in the public. Um, this is, of course, the forum statement that happened on Team Liquid, where you were, quote, saying, or where you can be found right here, say, saying, nope, you're all just a bunch of fucks. It just so happens I get to p get paid to treat you like it. It's fucking awesome. Now, when you said this, what, what prompted this statement? I mean, did you go into the forum in, in, in a bad mood already, or did whatever happened just incite rage? I, I don't think, well, there wasn't any, I know, because you know, I'm the one who said it. There wasn't any <laughs> like, intense rage or anger or whatever behind that. It was a thread discussing EG as like a powerhouse within the industry, and anything EG-related gets a ton of controversy just because some people love them, some people hate them. Um, and so part of the, dis the discussion was just going on, and I saw some posts that was like, EG is taking advantage of a competitive platform to sell their brand of entertainment. It was like, we aren't actually trying, or the, the premise was we weren't actually trying to compete. We were just trying to use esports in order to push ourselves as entertainment and a marketing like, brand and all that. And so I posted, not, not a nice, but also not a mean, a different post that was along the lines of, you know, that's how you make money in this industry. The viewership rewards entertainment and not results. Uh, Code S Koreans can stream and get less than 500 viewers, whereas me, not winning a tournament for months and months and months, and not even performing particularly well in anything else, I can stream and get 10,000 viewers. You know, like being a personality, uh, having a following, and being interesting, that's just what viewers reward. That's what viewers watch. And this is a job for all of us. We have to make money. EG is a business. The purpose of the business is to be successful and to make money and whatnot. So they are just doing this in a way that actually makes esports a viable industry. And so to shit on them for that didn't make much sense to me. And so, you know, you know, I, I posted explaining the, the exact same things I've been saying here. And then some random guy, just not not anybody, I on the forum or elsewhere, uh, posted a comment. It was something like, I think you can see it in the quote. Uh, it was just like, oh, so this is your justification for acting like an asshole. I'm sure you're a really nice person in real life or whatever. And it just struck me as kind of like smarmy and annoying. And it really bothers me when like random members of the community try and lash out at pros to post on forums just because, you know, that's a pro. I can try and take him down. There's not really anything he can do to me. So that's just kind of annoying. So I made a snarky little comment. Like, you guys are all fucks. So I get to treat you like it and get paid. There wasn't, I mean, people can take it for what it is, but there wasn't any real intent behind it. It's just a guy was being an asshole. I found it kind of annoying. I made a comment that was obviously way too generalized and way too broad. But that comment didn't generate anything at all right away, I don't think. Um, I didn't know there was any problem with it until actually the night before I was released when our manager, Cody, messaged me and said shit was coming down the line and that that comment pissed off a lot of people. And so then I went on and read it and saw the thread. And just given the general environment, um, like me losing the WCS match, generating a lot of attention, people not being, I don't know, just there had been a lot of negative attention around me recently. And I think that was just kind of the tipping point that was uh, just a good excuse for everyone to get all riled up. And that's what came of it. I want to take a, a couple steps back. Did you kind of realize the weight of the statement after saying it, whether it was five seconds, whether it was 30 minutes or a day after saying it? No, not until I was actually released from the team. Uh, actually, that morning, before I knew, like before I had the conversation with our management, I messaged Cody asking, should I go and say the game? This is blown way out of proportion. I want to talk about it, I can calm it down. It's obviously not what I meant. It shouldn't be generating this much shit. I, d I still don't consider it particularly that bad because I've always been pretty clear in the past. The people who are actually my fans, I appreciate them greatly. We wouldn't be here without them. I, I, I've said that explicitly along with other things that mean the same thing many times. Um, and so like when I say things like that, the obvious implication is always that it's the people like, if you go on my stream chat, you can see there's a lot of people who like to just watch, like to watch the downfalls, watch me lose, or the whole rage, or all that dumb bullshit. And a lot of people like in order to watch me in order to see that. And those are the fucks. Those are the people I'm talking about. And obviously, why would I call people who like provide my living and support me and are the entire reason this all exists? Why would I call them fucks? But I need to be much more clear in how I state things, obviously. But no, I never even thought it would generate any kind of fallout. I didn't think it was particularly bad, especially compared to some of the other shit I say. Like, I say shit that I generally should be fired for, and I get away with it. It's just whatever catches the media's attention on any given day 
and that happened to be the thing that blew up. This is somewhat of a stretch, but I, I do feel it's a valid question. Has anyone on EG or maybe outside EG um, encouraged you to kind of be that guy in a public space uh, for marketing reasons? Not for marketing reasons at all. Uh, Scott Smith, who's no longer part of the management or whatever, he kind of liked it just because that's like he thought it was like he thought it was just interesting and fun and good. And he was he's from the Counter Strike days; they're much more fiery and. You know, he's been part of that scene. Anything I say is half of what they say face to face to each other during their competitions. It's just a much more, by current standards, much more toxic community. And so he comes from that, and he just thinks all the flaming and the shit talking. He thinks that's funnier. Uh, so he would be like, "Yeah, that was fucking funny what you said, and it's, it's stupid how how up in arms they are about it." Um, but otherwise, it always felt like it was something like we acknowledge that this is what makes you who you are, and what drives a lot of fans, and they are what we based off of. So that's fine. But please just don't take it overboard, and don't make us have to explain things to sponsors. That was always the approach they took. I do want to get kind of clarification. I think you might have said something along these lines, but are are there any regrets with what you said? Do you have like a, a I guess, an upfront apology or anything to offer like that to the the people out there? Uh, I'd apologize to any of my genuine fans who took that to mean that I didn't respect them or didn't appreciate them. I was not calling them fucks, as I said. That um, that was aimed at the people who aren't really fans but consider themselves fans or at least viewers. Or the fans of esports who aren't really fans of esports and they just like the drama and the attention. Um, those those aren't the kind of people we need and they I would appreciate if they good, would get out of the community. Um, but those are not the people. Or, the genuine fans, those are not the people I was talking to, and I apologize to anyone who uh, did think I meant that. In, in retrospect, uh, do you wish you just would have never said anything at all? Or are you, really. do you stand by your statement? I don't. I stand by my statement within the clarifications I've made thus far. Those people, the, the actual fucks, they should get out of the community. We don't need them. We can make something that's actually built off the actual appreciation of esports and not the, the drama mongering. Um, so that I would stand by. Obviously, it's not worth what, like, the statement doesn't have any value to me. I just made it because I was trolling through the forums. Not trolling. I was reading through the forums um, and found a post that I found kind of annoying. That was a reply to something I wrote, and so I wrote an annoying reply back. There's no value in it one way or the other. And it ended up costing my, my spot on EG. But uh, as I kind of said earlier, I, I kind of think this is going to be an opportunity, and we'll elaborate on that later in the show what I intend to do going forward. So in some ways, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. But obviously, just looking at it objectively, making that post was in no way worth losing a spot on EG. Well, let's talk about what happened between kind of that 24-hour-ish period uh, of the statement being said, and then, of course, your WCS matches in Group C. Um, did management discuss anything with you? Was your state of mind going into those games uh, as fresh as it could be? Or were you kind of a little bit upset as to what might happen, uh, or not upset, maybe thinking about what might happen because of the statement. I had no idea that the post mattered at all. I figured it would just be not a thing at all until, I think it was the night of the WCS matches, I couldn't, and the next day the release happened. Um, but I had no idea anyone knew about it or cared about it or that it was anything at all. They didn't approach me until that night. Let's talk about the match versus Polt, and I'm going to go ahead and play a video kind of showing exactly what happened uh, as this occurs, and I want you to, to really talk us through your perhaps mindset as to why you left, because I think a lot of your fans were wondering. So we'll bring this up, and I believe you can see it as well. Just kind of walk us through why exactly you left this game when you did. Well, it's, it's going to be hard to explain just from this clip, but yeah, we'll go through this clip, and then I'll give more of a broad broad description of the gameplay and why I thought I had lost at that point. So this is of course the the moment that everyone is referencing where both armies are 200 200. The seeker missile hits the one brood lord. I believe he starts attacking your base at the 6 and then the good game does not come and you end up just leaving the game. So walk us through that uh, entire match. Uh I can't see it yet if it's up. Oh. I I showed it here. Do you just want to see the entire match? Do you have a specific moment that you want me to kind I of can, go back to? I can just discuss it. I don't really need to go through it. Sure, sure. That'd be, that'd be good. But yeah, the biggest thing is that I wasn't actually doing as well as everyone thought. Like, I, I played well. Um, my macro was on point. I had good control against the mines and whatnot. I was playing well throughout the game, and it looked like I was getting a big advantage. But the thing is, people aren't really used to current ZVT, particularly in macro games, I feel. 
And then, like every time I would beat his army, but then I would push him back into an established fourth base. Um, and Terran units are much more expendable now that they don't have to build up a big tank backbone to actually deal with their banelings. They can reproduce armies just as quickly, if not more so, than uh, Zerg. So if Terran is getting beat back army-wise but still, still securing expansions, they're doing just fine in the game. So I was not actually gaining advantage. I was just kind of holding even. And on a, in a half-map scenario, like a map like Daybreak where it can be split to half-map, you really need to be doing a lot more than just holding back their army. You need to be denying expansions. Um, otherwise, I feel that uh, you're on the way towards a very uncomfortable situation. And so it did get to late game, and a lot of people looking that would think that I had a pretty big advantage because I had a solid economy, and I had ultras out. But the thing is, Pult had a very solid economy as well, and he was transitioning techs to ravens. And that's just, that's not the same situation it was in Wings of Liberty. You can't just sit there and go up to Broodlord, to Corruptor, and Fester, and then win, because uh, Terran Air is now better than Zerg Air. If they go Battlecruiser, Viking, Raven, they beat you in the air. And he been sitting there with a the planetary, doing constant counterattacks. I was never going to break that, and I didn't really have a composition that I could head up to that would actually deal with it. So when he established a 12 o'clock base after taking out top left multiple times, and then continuing to put pressure everywhere, like he was playing it well, but it was really just a very uncomfortable situation, and not a particularly advantageous situation for Zerg uh, ZVT. Like, we were on equal bases at that point. I had lost top left. I was denying his bottom right. But he had secured 12. I had 6, but it was probably going to fall. Either my inset expansion or my 6 o'clock expansion was going to fall. My army wasn't fast enough to deal with his mobility. And he was just going to keep building up Ravens and Battlecruisers. Like, yes, if he were dumb, he would attack into me and, like, maybe move command some fungals. And then my Ultras and Broodlords could just clean him up and go in an attack move. And I think those are the situations that a lot of people want me to stay in for because sometimes dumb shit does happen. But as it was, Holt's a very smart player. He was in a really good situation. He wasn't going to throw that away. And as silly as it seems, leaving with a 3k, 3k bank, uh, lots of larva, and a maxed army, it's just if that maxed army isn't going to do anything to him and he knows how to play the situation, you're going to lose. And I wasn't in a particularly good mindset going in just in general. Um, but, I mean, I, I genuinely feel the game was over and that I had, I had no reason to stay in and try and play it out. If you had to do it all again, would you leave in the same, same moment or around the same moment? Or would you Probably. have stayed? Um, I guess maybe it would have been worthwhile to wait until he actually took down one of those two bases, but I feel that that was guaranteed going to happen. So I, I see nothing wrong with leaving when I did. Uh, I believe the last time you were actually on Real Talk, which was almost a year and a half, maybe two years ago, you referenced the fact that you had a sports psychologist. Um, are you still seeing or have you still been seeing the same sports psychologist? And if you stop seeing them, why? No, I actually only saw her once, and I was very, very unimpressed. She came into it um, just not researched or prepared at all. She had no idea, like to the extent that she was like, you can actually play computer games for a living. You make money off that. It's the competition. You're not, you're not balance testing them. You know, all the shit you get from random uninformed people if you tell them that you play a game for a living. Um, and so I was just kind of, I felt that was pretty unprofessional. And if she didn't really want to invest the time to even know what I did when she had been hired for a pretty good rate to try and counsel me in it, then it just seemed like a waste of my time. Do you think that something like that is, is in your future future that you need, or will you just kind of continue on as you have been? Um, well, it's something I was going to discuss later in the show when we tar start talking about my future more, but I guess uh, it kind of clarifies a lot of the stuff that's been asked. I am not going to continue as a competitive player. Um, it's just gotten to the point where competition is not enjoyable for me anymore, and that is what kind of drove me in pro gaming, especially in StarCraft 2. I don't particularly enjoy the game, but I really liked beating people, and now that's just, well, I'm not winning nearly as much, which is part of the reason it's less fun. But the competition itself just is not as interesting to me or challenging to me or satisfying to me as it used to be. And without that, I see no reason to continue playing when there's a lot more that I could do in the community. And um, this kind of coincides well with the departure from EG as it gives me a lot more freedom to do things on my own and pursue uh, things that interest me on my own. Um, but it's, not, it's actually also worth um, mentioning that that meeting I had with Alex and Cody, we actually came to the same conclusion. I was going to play the WCS match, and if I won it, then I would continue as a pro player. But in general, we were planning on moving me more towards a casting uh, personality content producer, um, even as part of EG. Uh, just because we felt that that was the best option for both of us. So this, is, this isn't really something new. This is not happening as a result of me leaving EG. But it is something that has been in the works. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I probably won't be getting a sports psychologist as I won't be competing anymore. 
I do want to take a couple steps back. We will, of course, revisit that because I think that's probably the, the most, and I guess the biggest statement you've said thus far. But I, w I do want to go back to the actual uh, experience of you being released for the team. So the following yeah. day after the WCS match, it was announced uh, both live on Team Liquid through a post from the CEO, Alex, as well as live on State of the Game, through in control that you were going to be removed from Team EG effective immediately. Um, initially, what was your response as soon as that happened? It was a definite shock. Um, I found out via a group call from all of EG's staff. Uh, Alex just told me, we're, this, this is really bad. We're getting a lot of heat from the sponsors. We're going to have to release you from the team. And like I said, it was a shock. I've been on the team for about two and a half years now, I think. I lived with a lot of the members for a long time. I've traveled around the world with a lot of them. Um, it's been like a family to me in esports since I moved back from, or since I moved over to StarCraft II. And so to have that all go away in a split second, it's like a, shocking is just like the only word that really comes to mind for it. Uh, so I had to sit there and think about it for a while and kind of absorb it. And, but pretty quickly I moved on to planning what I was going to do in the future. I'm, I'm, I don't enjoy sitting around feeling things. I'd much rather be planning a course of action or figuring out what I'm going to do or figure out at least how to make things stop sucking. So I kind of just focused more on that and helped me, helped me through it. It, it was tough. I've, I've been with them for a long time. Was the decision made by management, as far as you know, purely because of pressure from sponsors? I didn't really want to stick around to discuss it. They made their decision. I wasn't going to question that. Um, I just I wanted to have a little bit of time to myself to decompress and digest things. So I didn't ask them. I, Alex did say that it was uh, a result of a lot of sponsor pressure. However, just personal speculation, I believe that if it was purely sponsor pressure, it could have been dealt with with a public apology and a suspension or something along those lines. Uh, I think what happened is I am not I was not worth as much as I have been in the past. I had a very lucrative contract um, to the extent that I, I felt it was a business um, like a bad business decision on their part to actually give me that contract at the start of the year. Um, I was not, I, in my opinion, worth what I was being paid, and it finally gotten to the point where I was too much of a liability, and they were getting too many complaints. And if I wasn't worth it anyway, why keep me around? I don't think the sponsors said, and this is, again, all pure speculation, I don't think the sponsors said, you cut him from the team immediately or we drop our sponsorship. Um, but I do know that they were definitely under pressure from sponsors. Do you agree that EG made the wrong or right decision? Wh which one do you side with there? They probably made the right decision. Um, it, it makes it easier for me to say that because I'm not particularly upset about it either. Um, but I do believe, like I said, I, I don't think I was worth my contract. Um, I think it might have been in their interest to tone it, like tone down my contract, maybe make it more something more incentive based, so I actually have the same incentive that I do now to like work harder, improve myself, and do more things with my time. Um, but in that case, then it would be for their benefit as well as mine. Uh, however, I guess they just decided, you know, it's it's not worth it after all the time we'd spent together and the fact that things hadn't changed very much. Is there any malice towards uh, towards the management or perhaps other EG players uh, because of the decision? None whatsoever, uh, especially the players. Like a lot of them reached out to me right after. And I don't want to say condolences because it's not like a particularly sad thing, but in that vein, you're just like, you know, it sucks that you're not going to be on the team anymore. We're still friends, we can hang out sometime. But Jeff and Anna and Chris and Bryce, I um, hope I'm not missing anyone, all reached out and uh, passed along similar sentiments like that. So, no, we've, we've all lived together and been teammates for a long, long time, and we're all really good friends still. There's no hard feelings there at all. Now, there were, I don't know if rumors is the right word, but uh, on Inside the Game the past couple of weeks, the Muslim has been missing, uh, and I noticed that you also left out his name and the people that contacted you. Uh, can you kind of explain what is going on between the two of you now that you are no longer a part of EG, and, and did that have any effect on what occurred uh, yesterday? He actually did contact me, although I didn't. I did. We don't particularly like each other. Um, we put up. We were actually quite close friends at the beginning. I was the one who recommended that he be brought on to EG. I didn't particularly enjoy living with him. I found him kind of annoying in a few ways. I'm not going to go into details with it. It's already kind of petty to say what I did, but you know, it, it's a it's a very public thing. People are curious about it. So no, we did not get along at all. Um, and after we didn't live together, there was no real reason to hold back. So we started pushing each other's buttons more. Um, and just didn't get along at all. And so the incidents happened on the ladder. We were told to tone that down. Nothing happened since. But he did not feel comfortable going on inside the game, so he requested they find a substitute for him. 
um, and hasn't been on since. I don't know what's happening with that now, uh, but that that was the situation to date. But yeah, we just don't particularly get along. It's been stated many times that the initial deal that you signed with Evil Geniuses was one of the most lucrative in all of esports. Um, can you reveal any specifics as to what was inside of this deal when you initially joined? Uh, my initial deal, I don't think my initial deal was particularly interesting because StarCraft II wasn't that big back then. But the next re renewal I signed about the, si about the time Chris joined, I know the two of us were far and away the biggest contracts in StarCraft II. His was more money up front and guaranteed. Mine was more incentive based. I, I think he ended up making more off the deal on the whole, but I'm not sure. Um, and then my current deal, I believe there's a lot more incentives going around, particularly from EG. Uh, so it makes it harder to talk in terms of absolute value. But on the whole, I was usually getting paid the most unless Stefano hit all of his incentives, which were much harder to obtain than mine were. So generally speaking, it was the biggest contract in StarCraft II that I know of. But I'm not going to talk about any specifics or anything. You can't get a number value out of you at all? No, I'm, maybe I could, but I, I don't actually know the legalities of the contract anymore. Okay. But just out of respect to EG, I'm not going to give a number at least. Fair enough, fair enough. So you've kind of given every uh, indication that you are extremely unhappy. You already said that you're going to quit uh, playing competitively, which might actually trump this question, but what was the core issue that had you so frustrated with everything? Uh, what do you feel needs to change um, for other pro gamers moving forward now that you've kind of stepped out of it? I don't know for other pro gamers, because other pro gamers, I think, enjoy the game more. They're also under less public scrutiny and less pressure to perform. Like, if some players... Well, my results have been pretty abysmal lately, so I don't want to draw any comparisons. But if other players don't do as well as they're expected to, their fans are like, oh, that sucks, I really hope he can do better, let's support him. And my genuine fans are like that as well. But I also have this whole core of kind of shitty fans who just, like, I don't know, they, they like to watch, and even they'll cheer me on if they win, but if I lose, then they just become utter assholes. And so dealing with that got an annoying and old over time. I have a pretty thick skin. I've dealt with a lot of that for a long time. But eventually it accumulates, and when you're not getting much enjoyment out of the rest of it, that plus everything else is enough to push over the edge. And just, I've never enjoyed playing the game very much. I feel it pales in comparison to Brood War, and there's just a lot of things that I don't enjoy about it. Um, and then more as a person and professionally, I felt, I don't want to say stifled, because I really, really appreciate everything EG did for me, but EG is a company. Alex is a very driven individual who knows exactly what he wants, and things have to be done his way. Um, so a lot of the times I would come to them and I would want to like do a project on my own or I would want to cast for an event or something and it would conflict with plans they had or it would be a sponsorship conflict, all of which makes perfect sense, of course. Um, there, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the way they handled it. But there were a lot of these things that I wanted to do or things I would like to do on my own just to have more control and have something of, of my own that feels more productive and creative. And I wouldn't be able to do that, so I felt a little bit stifled in that. Um, even to the extent that going into this year I wasn't particularly planning on signing with EG again. I was thinking either retirement, just flat out, or going independent and doing things with more freedom on my own. But me and Alex reached, uh, we reached an agreement, reached a contract that I was very happy with and basically couldn't turn down. Uh, so I ended up in that situation, but I'm, I'm very happy to have the freedom to go pursue some of my own projects, not be stuck playing anymore, be able to do more casting, and it's more with the community, more for my fans. I think the biggest question on everyone's mind coming into this real talk was, what are you going to do next? You've already announced that you're quitting competitive gaming. What do you do that is not competitive gaming? Um, I, I personally believe that I'm one of the best analytical casters. I believe I'm very good at that. And I get a ton of positive feedback every time I do it, which makes it more encouraging to do. So I think that will be the main thrust going forward. I would like to commentate. Um, and not analyst desk. I feel analyst desk isn't quite as interesting and exciting. I would like to be the analytical commentator for you know whatever major events I can. MLGs, DreamHacks, IEMs, um, I don't know, WCS if you count it different from all of the hosting events, all of that. So that will be the main thing. I'm, I will continue to stream and play. I'll be kind of like Jeff, except just you know less funny. Um, I'm gonna keep playing, keep streaming my games with a little bit more of an emphasis on commentary. And I'll probably do um, more replay analysis if I can bring myself to after a loss. Um, more fan interaction, more content specifically for them. I'm probably going to introduce uh, like a subscription thing, which will come with it. Um, maybe educational resources, like going over replays uh, specifically for players. I don't think I'm going to do lessons. I don't particularly enjoy that. Um, probably not that. And then fun games with fans as part of the subscription package and all that. Then other stuff. Um, of course, I'll be part of community shows as always. 
Uh, and then just other content stuff that I have planned or at least I'm thinking about but I'm not finalized yet or I don't have partners for yet. So I don't really want to... I don't really want to tease or announce anything that might not end up happening. So just lots of other things that I don't have set in stone yet. And Control stated on a stream yesterday uh, when he was asked to kind of talk about the entire event that EG has at least approached you saying that they will, of course, pay your rent for the entirety of the year in San Francisco, as well as offered support as an agency or some sort of agency. Uh, is that looking like a possibility? Have Has... Has EG actually approached you and offered this? Uh, can you respond to that at all? On the call with Alex and the rest of the staff, where I was told I was being released, he did offer um, both to act as management or like an agency for me, as well as to pay my rent since I did move out to the Bay Area for EG and I'm now stuck in a lease. Um, so he did offer to pay the rent. Uh, we haven't hashed out any details for that yet, but he, the offer is there. And he did also offer to act as an agency. Uh, I haven't talked to them since then but I have no intention of using them as such. I feel like any kind of gaming team acting as an agency doesn't really make sense because they have their own sponsors. They just, they don't function as an agency. They have their own interests and, you know, it would be irresponsible of them for, to not put their own interests first. So if a company approaches them and they're like, we want to sponsor IDRA and they're acting as my agent, it's still in their best interest to say, well, you could sponsor IDRA, but you could sponsor EG instead and we're way better because of all this stuff. So. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is their job as a business. It's just they're not an agency, so I have no intention to use them as such. Um, if anything, I would get an actual agent, someone who works on commission and you know could only have my best interests at heart. Of course, you've been on the One More Game TV show Inside the Game for, I think, the better part of a year, maybe a year and a half. Uh, will you continue? We actually just passed our, oh. actually just passed our two year milestone. Two year milestone. So will you continue to be on that show, or are you done with it? Um, as I said, I haven't talked to them, but I can't imagine I'll be on it anymore, given that the same sponsors who uh, told them to release me from the team also sponsor that show. So I, I really, really doubt I'll still be on the inside of the game. I have no intention to be on it. <laughs> the one last thing that at least I really have is a question. Uh, in Control, one other thing that he mentioned on the stream was that you are now playing League of Legends. Probably not as much as you are playing StarCraft, but... As someone who has been extremely, extremely negative about the game in the past, how do you feel about the game now that you are no longer kind of, I guess, paid to play StarCraft? Uh, I don't feel like I was extremely, extremely negative, although maybe I was and I'm just not remembering. But I, 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 always called it, I always called it a casual game, and I do still feel it is somewhat casual, um, particularly mechanically. It's just, it, it can't be of a comparison to an RTS because there's just not that much going on. But there are a lot of things I didn't really appreciate before I started playing it. You know, there's all of the teamwork in the group. Uh, it's actually mostly teamwork. Like, the actual mechanics of it just can't be that hard because there's not too much going on. Um, but it is player versus player, so there's always um, that aspect of it, and which means you're never going to be able to be perfect at it because you're always having to account for another player's actions. But the teamwork aspect of it and all that is another element that's completely new to me because I've always, always played one versus one games because right, I don't do particularly well as a team. Um, so there's a lot of complexity and depth to it that I underestimated before, and I enjoy it a lot. Um, I mean, I play it pretty regularly. I'm not going to go into rank or anything like that because that just invites people to be dicks. Um, but I, I play it. I enjoy it. It's just a pastime. I'm not, I'm not planning on doing anything at all professionally with it. I, I don't believe that will happen. Do you plan on streaming it ever? Maybe. Um, if there's the demand for it, some of those fun games that I play with subscribers every once in a while could be lead. Um, it's kind of up to them what the community wants in return for them paying me. Well, the last question I guess I have, and I say this somewhat anxiously, but do you have anything to say to your fans today? <laughs> um, I'd like to thank all of the real ones. Uh, they are the reason that I'm still doing this. When I tweeted... Um, about a day after the announcement went live, I think I tweeted that, you know, thank you all for your support. I'm not leaving esports. And the, the, the reply and, like, the feedback from the community was just overwhelmingly positive. Both big community figures, like a lot of the higher-ups at DreamHack and LG had really, really nice things to say that I appreciated a lot. But then also just everyone from the public who replied, there was maybe one or two asshole comments within the whole hundreds and hundreds of replies and retweets and whatever else you can do on Twitter. Um, then the TL threads, my fan club has always been amazing. I appreciate them so much. And even like the thread about the release, it was still split, but of course, you know, that's going to happen on any controversial topic. And me and EG are about the most controversial things you can find in the community. And even that was pretty toned down. There wasn't a whole lot of vitriol or just angst. There was 
you know, they made a good decision. That's fine. You can you can think that they probably did make a good decision. But overall, things were very respectable, and just generally very kind and supportive. And that actually kind of shocked me because I have a very very vocal anti fan base. Uh, the people who don't like me are very very passionate about not liking me, and that's generally what I hear. They're the loud ones. The the people who are actual fans. I was honestly kind of shocked to see how much the positive support came out when I made that tweet and when I discussed other things I was going to be doing. Um, and so I really just didn't get to appreciate them enough or even realize that they existed to the extent that they do, or I, at least I forgot that they exist. So I would like to give a very big, uh, just a very big thank you to all of them because they definitely made sure that it was the right decision to stay within eSports. Well, that is all I've got. Do you have any shout-outs, anything else that you kind of want to get off your chest before we call it a show? I don't have a bunch of shout-outs to do anymore. That's actually kind of nice. I don't have to remember that. <laughs> Uh, I guess I got to build some of my own now, though. Um, just thank you to everyone who's been supportive. It's, it's really just the fans here who have been there. And, of course, all my friends on EG and all the staff. Like I said before, there's absolutely no hard feelings. They made a business decision. It's a totally understandable one. It's one I probably would have made even earlier if I were in their shoes. So I appreciate them for all of their support uh, in the past, in the last two and a half years, just everything about it, the teammates and the staff, of course. Yeah, I think that's just about it. Um, but I'm, I am very excited going forward. I think this is going to be a very good thing for me. I, it gave up a lot of, not free, but guaranteed money. Um, and I'm going to have to work my way up, back up to that. But I think I'm going to enjoy the process much more than just sitting there streaming and being kind of just being me. I, I like the, the new challenge and the opportunity to actually do something and have control of my own career. I'm very, very excited about that. I hope all my fans are as well. All right, well, I'll prompt you one last time. Where do we see you next, Greg? Where can people check you out if they want ah. to see anything that's going on? I forgot I have my own shit, too. Um, exactly. At, <laughs> on Twitter, at Idrajit, I-D-R-A-J-I-T. Uh, Facebook fan page, Idrajit, uh, same. And my stream is now twitch.tv slash Idrajit, or go through Idrajit.tv. A um, bunch of new exciting stuff. I'll be streaming pretty constantly, um, as always. Uh, but also the subscription package and planning on putting that out and hopefully a bunch of other new exciting content, although no promise doesn't why that'll happen. I have to do all my own shit now, so it takes a lot longer. But keep an eye out for that as well. All right. Well, Greg, thank you for coming on. Uh, this has been Real Talk. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for tuning in.